SpaceX engineers couldn't believe their eyes when Ship 37's static fire created something they'd never seen before. This wasn't just any test. It was the first Starship static fire ever attempted directly on a launch pad, using completely untested methods that could have destroyed everything. The shocking part? Within hours of fuel loading, emergency crews were sprinting to the pad as dangerous white vapor started pouring from the rocket. Something had gone catastrophically wrong with their experimental setup. But what they discovered next left veteran engineers speechless. And it changes everything we thought we knew about Starship testing. Let's dive right in. July 28th, 5.47 a.m. The day everything changed 40 days. That's all the time SpaceX had between Ship 36's catastrophic explosion and Ship 37 rolling toward what would become the most dangerous test in Starship history. But here's what shocked veteran engineers. They weren't heading to the Massey test site. For the first time ever, a 165-foot Starship was moving toward Pad A, the orbital launch mount designed exclusively for super-heavy boosters weighing 3,000 tons. Think about this. It's like trying to park a Ferrari in a garage built for monster trucks. The engineering challenge was so extreme that seasoned SpaceX veterans questioned if it was even possible. 6.32 a.m. The chopsticks grabbed Ship 37 with surgical precision, lifting 1,400 tons of rocket onto a test stand that had never been designed for this purpose. Watching this massive vehicle settle onto the modified mount, engineers held their breath. This wasn't just a test. It was a desperate gamble that could either revolutionize rocket testing or destroy everything they'd built. But what happened in the following 12 hours would shock the aerospace industry and reveal engineering secrets that SpaceX had kept hidden for years. Here's the first shocking revelation. The adapter holding Ship 37 wasn't built from scratch. SpaceX took a discarded ship transport stand, essentially a giant metal claw gathering dust at Starbase, and transformed it into the most critical piece of test equipment in their arsenal. But the real engineering nightmare was the fuel system. The ship quick disconnect sits 40 feet higher than any normal test stand. The booster quick disconnect was designed to pump thousands of gallons of cryogenic fuel downward into Super Heavy's massive tanks. Ship 37 needed those same propellants delivered to completely different connection points 150 feet in the air. SpaceX's solution sounds like science fiction. They built a custom steel pipeline system that snakes through the launch tower, redirecting methane at minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit and oxygen at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit through pipes that were never tested under these conditions. We're talking about fluids so cold they can freeze human tissue instantly, flowing through improvised plumbing at pressures that could level city blocks. And here's the part that made engineers nervous. They were essentially beta testing brand new hardware with enough explosive fuel to destroy the entire launch complex. 12.47 p.m., when innovation meets reality road closures went into effect, Boca Chica residents received evacuation notices warning of potential overpressure events. Engineers speak for explosions powerful enough to shatter windows miles away. The FAA established a temporary flight restriction zone extending 5,000 feet up. Everything was ready for something that had never been attempted before. 5 p.m., cryogenic fuel loading began. For five hours, everything looked perfect. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen flowed through those untested pipeline systems without a single leak. The improvised mounting system held ship 37 rock steady. The modified quick disconnect those crab claw connectors they'd built, worked flawlessly. 5.30 p.m., white vapor began venting from Ship 37. In rocket testing, uncontrolled venting means one thing. Emergency detanking is underway. Something had gone catastrophically wrong with their desperate experiment. But here's where the story takes its first shocking twist. The failure wasn't caused by their improvised fuel system. Multiple sources suggest a range violation. Someone or something had breached the safety perimeter. When you're dealing with enough explosive fuel to level several city blocks, even a single person in the wrong place shuts everything down. The test was scrubbed, but that's not the shocking part. Here's what SpaceX discovered that changed everything. Their Frankenstein solution actually worked perfectly. 
The modified fuel redirection system handled cryogenic propellants without any issues. The improvised mounting system held a 1,400-ton rocket steady during fuel loading. The custom adapters performed flawlessly. In other words, their desperate engineering solution was actually brilliant innovation disguised as desperation. But there was a much more terrifying problem lurking beneath the surface. One that could have destroyed not just Ship 37, but the entire Starship program. Ship 37 carries COPV tanks, composite overwrapped pressure vessels made of carbon fiber wrapped around metal cores. These aren't your typical steel tanks. They're designed to be incredibly light, but strong enough to withstand enormous pressure. Here's the terrifying part. These composite tanks fail without warning. Unlike steel, which shows stress cracks and deformation before breaking, composite materials can look perfectly fine right up until they explode like a grenade with an invisible timer. Remember Ship 36's explosion that destroyed the Massey site? That was a COP V failure. Now they were testing Ship 37 with identical COPV tanks using completely untested fuel delivery systems on a launch pad surrounded by millions of dollars in infrastructure. If those composite tanks had failed during this improvised test, the explosion wouldn't just destroy Ship 37, it could take out the entire launch tower, the ground systems, and set SpaceX's Starship program back by years. The engineers rushing to the pad weren't just responding to a range violation. They were racing against a potential catastrophe that could have ended everything. July 29th, the revelation that changes everything. Ship 37 couldn't complete its static fire on July 28th, but SpaceX had one more day in their launch window. What they discovered during those 24 hours would fundamentally change how rocket companies approach testing forever. The shocking truth, SpaceX's improvised pad-based testing system wasn't just a desperate solution. It was a breakthrough that could eliminate weeks from their testing timeline. No more transporting rockets back and forth between test sites. No more rebuilding damaged test facilities after explosions. But here's the revelation that has industry experts talking. While SpaceX was reinventing rocket testing, they were also solving a problem that had plagued them for months. Ship 38, the final Block 2 Starship, completed its cryogenic testing at the partially rebuilt Massey site with flying colors. It passed every test and was heading back to Mega Bay 2 for engine installation. Both Ship 37 and Ship 38 represent the end of an era, the last Block 2 Starships before SpaceX moves to their revolutionary Block 3 design. Here's what has SpaceX fans and industry experts debating. Will SpaceX attempt a static fire test both ships using their new pad-based system? The implications are enormous. If pad-based testing becomes standard, SpaceX could potentially test and launch rockets faster than any company in history. But there's another shocking development that makes this even more significant. While SpaceX was desperately improvising in Texas, the rest of the world was watching and learning. In Australia, Gilmore Space Technologies attempted their first orbital launch with the Eris rocket. 14 seconds after liftoff, it crashed in a sideways slide that looked eerily similar to early SpaceX failures. The contrast is striking. While established rocket companies are still struggling with basic launches, SpaceX is so advanced they're inventing entirely new ways to test rockets when their primary facilities get destroyed. Other companies are already studying SpaceX's improvised solutions, wondering if they should abandon traditional test facilities entirely. The aerospace industry is realizing that SpaceX's desperate solution might actually be the future of rocket testing. But here's the final twist that makes this story even more incredible. The real breakthrough wasn't the successful fuel system or the flawless adapters. It was SpaceX proving that when your back is against the wall, the most impossible solutions sometimes work better than traditional methods. They turned a catastrophic facility loss into an opportunity to revolutionize an entire industry. Ship 37's failed static fire test wasn't a setback. It was a proof of concept that changes everything we thought we knew about rocket testing. The countdown to Ship 37's next test attempt is already underway. But now the question isn't whether SpaceX will try again. It's whether their shocking engineering gamble will prove that sometimes the most desperate solutions create the biggest breakthroughs in human spaceflight history. What we witnessed wasn't just a failed test. 
It was SpaceX rewriting the rules of rocket engineering in real time. They took a catastrophic setback and transformed it into a potential revolution that could change how every rocket company tests their vehicles. But here's what keeps me up at night thinking about this. If SpaceX can improvise solutions, this brilliant under extreme pressure, what other impossible challenges in space exploration are actually just waiting for someone desperate enough to try a completely different approach? The story of Ship 37 isn't over. Block 2 testing is about to get even more intense, and Block 3 development is already pushing boundaries we didn't think existed. What engineering impossibility do you think SpaceX will tackle next? Drop your wildest predictions in the comments, because at this point, nothing seems too crazy for them to attempt. Space exploration just got a whole lot more interesting, and we're here to break down every shocking moment as it happens. SpaceX just shocked the space industry. Ship 37 rolled out and got stacked in days while Blue Origin spent six months testing the same components. Here's the kicker. Blue Origin claims they'll beat SpaceX to Mars, but they can't even get their second rocket ready after half a year. SpaceX is launching every few months. Blue Origin might not launch until November. But here's what nobody's talking about. Why is Jeff Bezos deliberately avoiding SpaceX for his Amazon satellite project? What's the real reason behind this shocking gap? Let's dive right in. Here's the shocking truth behind Ship 37. On June 18th, Ship 36 didn't just fail, it obliterated SpaceX's entire Massey test facility in a catastrophic explosion. The blast was so violent it destroyed the test stand, the ship, and wiped out millions of dollars of equipment in seconds. Any normal aerospace company would spend years rebuilding. Boeing? They'd form committees. Blue Origin? Question mark. They'd run safety reviews for months. But SpaceX? They did something that shocked the entire industry. Within weeks, they invented an entirely new way to test rockets. The star stool system? a revolutionary method that turns their launch pad into a test facility. Ship 37 became the first starship in history to prove this impossible concept actually works. But here's what nobody saw coming. While SpaceX was turning disaster into breakthrough innovation, Blue Origin was doing something that will blow your mind. Remember when New Glenn successfully flew in January? That was six months ago. Six months. What has Blue Origin accomplished in that time? They're still testing the exact same reaction control system that worked perfectly on their first flight. The same system. That already worked. Think about this timeline. In the six months Blue Origin spent retesting proven hardware, SpaceX experienced a catastrophic facility-destroying explosion, invented a completely new testing method, built Ship 37, developed the Star Stool system, and is already preparing for Flight 10 next month. But wait. It gets worse. That August 15th launch date Blue Origin promised. Industry insiders are whispering it's been pushed to September. Maybe October. Possibly November. If Blue Origin misses their own deadline again, they'll launch exactly twice in an entire year. SpaceX launched Starship seven times in 2024 alone. The question that's haunting the space industry. How can Jeff Bezos claim he'll beat SpaceX to Mars when he can't even get his second rocket off the ground? But the real bombshell isn't about launch delays. It's about what Jeff Bezos is doing behind closed doors with Amazon's Project Kuiper, and it's absolutely mind-blowing. Amazon needs to launch 1,618 satellites by mid-2026 or lose their license. That's a $10 billion project hanging in the balance. To save it, they've booked 83 launches across multiple providers. Here's the shocking part. SpaceX the company with the most reliable rocket in human history, gets exactly three launches out of 83 total flights. Three launches for the company that's never failed a Falcon 9 mission in over 300 flights. The company that launches every few days. Meanwhile, ULA gets the biggest chunk despite their Vulcan rocket being delayed for years. Ariane Space gets 18 flights for a rocket that's had exactly two successful missions ever. This isn't business. This is personal warfare. 
Bezos is literally risking a $10 billion satellite constellation to avoid giving money to his space rival. Amazon shareholders are so furious they've sued the board, claiming Bezos is putting personal vendettas ahead of company success. But what if this strategy backfires spectacularly? What if Blue Origin can't deliver when it matters most? Here's where this story takes a shocking turn. While everyone focuses on Earth orbit failures, Blue Origin is secretly positioning for the ultimate prize, and they might actually beat SpaceX to Mars. NASA's escapade mission, two spacecraft designed to study Mars's invisible magnetic shield, was supposed to launch last October. It didn't happen because Blue Origin wasn't ready, but now Blue Origin has a second chance. If they launch this fall, those spacecraft reach Mars in late 2027. That would put Blue Origin's name on the first Mars mission of the decade, not SpaceX's. Imagine the headlines, Blue Origin beats SpaceX to Mars while SpaceX still tests Earth orbit. There's just one problem. These Mars spacecraft use hypergolic fuel, the most dangerous rocket fuel ever created. Once it's loaded, you have zero room for delays. One technical hiccup, one weather problem, one component test that runs long, and the entire mission gets pushed back two years to the next Mars launch window. Given Blue Origin's track record of delays, what are the odds they nail this narrow window perfectly? But Mars is just the beginning. Blue Origin's real master plan targets the moon, and their timeline is absolutely aggressive. The Blue Moon Mark 1 Pathfinder mission launches August 2025. That's eight months from now. This uncrewed test flight will demonstrate precision landing technology before astronauts climb aboard the Mark II version in 2030. Here's what makes this timeline shocking. SpaceX's Starship Propellant Transfer Demonstration, the technology they need for deep space missions, isn't scheduled until Q3 2026. Blue Origin could be landing on the moon a full year before SpaceX proves they can refuel Starship in orbit. But landing on the moon requires technology that sounds like science fiction, zero boil-off systems that keep rocket fuel from evaporating in the vacuum of space. This is where the real technical battle begins, and it's absolutely mind